This is about as close to pig heaven as you can get. 3,000 sows are grazing, wallowing and farrowing on this open range pig farm at the base of the Parongarup Hills in southwestern Australia. It's the biggest farm of its type anywhere in the world and the animals are as happy as pigs in paddocks. This remarkable operation was set up four years ago by Nick Paspali, the man who heads Australia's pearling industry. It's truly a case of pearls before swine. The piggery is owned by the Paspali Pearling uh, group of companies in Darwin. And when my, my employer, Nicholas, came down and he had a look in the sheds, he, di he didn't think it was uh, welfare friendly to see animals confined. It's just a personal thing. And, I must say I've got a fair bit of sympathy with it as well. And we did have a small pilot farm in Albany that he also visited and he thought it was nice to see the sows walking around and doing their own thing basically. So he, he decided and he's probably um, forward thinking in that manner because in Britain especially and the rest of Europe, uh, tethering and confinement, total confinement of animals is actually going to be against the law within the next couple of years. And the, the general trend is that these things take a bit longer but ultimately in Australia they happen as well. The Great Southern Piggery is situated halfway between Albany and Mount Barker, about five hours drive south of Perth. And the climate in this part of Western Australia is almost perfect for pig farming. Covering 1,500 acres, the site at Parongarup is the main breeding farm. The sows have their own huts to farrow in. The huts even come equipped with shade cloth awnings in case the West Australian summers get a bit fierce. Each of the 3,000 sows is producing on average 20 pigs per year. And so far the system is more than comparable to the production rates in the intensive indoor systems which have dominated the industry since the Second World War. There's no doubt that the sows are fitter. You don't have to intervene with the birth process. When the sows are confined inside they don't get exercised so they tend to be unfit going into farrow. We don't have that problem. We don't have lameness problems because the sows are constantly standing and they're urinating and, they're, and the hoofs are wet, so they tend to get soft hoofs sometimes, and the hoofs don't wear down because they're not walking and they tend to get long claws, and uh, we have no lameness at all down there. And, uh, so this is like a combination of the best of both worlds, really? I think so. I think it's the way we're going to, going to have to go because the public perception, the way that we, we produce food and, and confine animals in, uh, with television and just education programmes, the public are aware of it now, and, They'll just boycott people, they won't buy meat, you know, if they think it's, it's uh, being produced in a cruel system. And I think we really have to be wary of that. And, always, and also the RSPCA are quite a strong group, and, and rightly so, you know, we just can't, can't do what we used to do to animals, you know, we have to be more humane, if that's the right word. The secret to open range farming is good stockmanship, a good supply of water and good electric fences. The animals here, if the fences are kept up, and the huts are strawed up and the wallows are looked after and maintained, the animals are quite happy and, and yeah, they, they can be quite easy to manage. Do they get sunburned? Well, they seem to cover themselves in a bit more dirt and seem to, their skin acclimatises to the weather. I guess it's a bit like a human being being outside compared to um, a labourer, I guess, working outside, laying bricks all day and an office worker coming outside. You know, I guess their situation is the same. A good climate is essential to the success of an open range pig farm, but most important is a good supply of water. The Parongarup site has a freshwater lake which is supplemented with bore water. There is uh, quite a good natural supply of water. Also the farm is quite elevated, therefore we can um, distribute the water to the animals um, on a regular basis, so they've got a good supply at any one point. During a winter's day we may use about 40 to 50,000 gallons a day and during the summer they will probably go up to 60, 70,000 gallons a day. But not every local council is keen on the idea of having thousands of pigs wandering about their shire. In fact, the Great Southern Pig Company was rejected by one council but accepted by the neighbouring council. Initially there was concerns, um, I think, and, and probably just the so if, if they didn't know what the operation was going to be involved. But we're very fortunate to have the Mount Barker Shire, which um, 
encroached the idea with a positive manner and allowed us to get a foothold into the um, new system which we, our company wanted us to develop and therefore we've been able to move towards a prospering uh, industry for the local region and also for our company. And the fears of some of the locals have been unfounded. After four years, there have been no problems. The pigs haven't escaped and gone feral, the smell's no different from any other farming enterprise, and the farm has been a great boost to employment in the Mount Barker area. Great Southern even has its own fully equipped workshop on site to build and repair the array of equipment it needs. Open range farming is labour intensive, a seven day a week operation that needs dozens of vehicles and workers to cover the 1500 acre site. We need about 25 people with the pigs and there's about five in the workshop so there's a workforce of about 30 people on this farm because the pigs have to be cared for seven days a week so the crew is broken into three crews so they work every third weekend so therefore the work during the week is completed by the Friday evening and then the weekend workers are generally a maintenance making sure the pigs are mated and fed and everything's working ready for the start of the following week. Outdoor pig production's not as simple as it sounds. It's not just a matter of putting pigs in paddocks and letting them procreate. It's a highly scientific system requiring accurate bookkeeping at every stage of production. Each sow is individually numbered and her fertility is tracked by computer. The same goes for the potency of the boars. Every farm worker has to keep track of the productivity of the herd. I just want to check up with some of your matters from last week. And we're going to answer this one here, that sow there. Okay. When the farm first started, boars and sows were allowed to run free in the paddocks. But it was soon realised that some sows were not mating successfully. So now supervised mating areas have been set up, similar to the practices already established in indoor piggeries. Our figures we have to compare favourably with all systems regardless whether they're inside or outside. So um, we're learning as we go and, and this is just a part of our development in trying to get the best figures we can for the company. The next step to improve production will be specialised mating centres with individual stalls. This almost mirrors the intensive system, but the sows will only stay here for their mating day. Now we can individually house the boars and the sows will be weaned. They'll be brought into weaned sow paddocks and then when they're due to come on heat, they'll be stalled um, for the day they're, they're mated in the morning, mated in the afternoon and then mated next morning and then they'll be taken out, put back into the outdoor system. That way we're confident the boar uh, is at its best status to serve the sow and also it allows us to introduce artificial insemination in a controlled manner. Inside of each of these three clear spans are 400 piglets, making a total of 1,200 pigs. Now that's just one week's production. So if you do the calculations over a year, you can see that this farm's producing more than 60,000 pigs a year. And by the time they get to market and fetch between $150 and $170 each, that makes a turnover of more than $10 million a year. The newly weaned piglets spend seven weeks running about on straw getting fit and fat before heading to Great Southern's grower finisher complex at Narragin a couple of hours closer to Perth. The straw-lined clear spans cost about a quarter of a conventional shed. And apart from the food, the only other expense is the straw. Each clear span is about eight or nine bales, so that's about 350 to 400 dollars per clear span, and that'll last about seven weeks for when the piglets are then shipped out to Narragin and the clear span's cleaned out and pressure washed and brought back to the state again. Out of the clear spans at the moment, we're getting between 40 and 50 tonne of um, straw and manure mixed together. At the moment, we're stockpiling it to compost it 
down and then we're going to spread it over the farm with a multi spreader. Um, I guess if there's a surplus of this product left over, it could be marketed by the company. It's feeding time at Great Southern's grower finisher complex at Narragin. The pigs spend 12 weeks here before heading to market at 22 weeks. The computer just opens the valve automatically and pumps the required amount of feed out and that's uh, determined by the number of pigs in the pen and the age of the pigs and it's, it's, uh, it's calibrated onto a growth curve. Like the operation at Mount Barker, the latest computerised data is also used at Narogen for maximum efficiency. Every pig is numbered and fed according to age and size. This shows them the computer is making up a mix at the moment for uh, Group 8, which is the smaller pigs uh, down the bottom where we were looking before. All the pigs at Narogen are on liquid feed rather than food and water. Once again, this is to ensure maximum efficiency of production. One of the main advantages of liquid feed is that you have better food conversion ratios, so for a lesser amount of food, we'll put on more weight. But the, the real advantage for us is we have limited water access. Um, we don't want the pigs to be drinking too much for two reasons. If they drink too much water on a hot day, that will reduce their consumption, so it'll slow their growth down. But the main one is from an effluent output point of view. We only give them as much water as they need. So it, it drastically reduces the amount of effluent that's going out of the piggery, because that's one of your major causes, impounding effluent. All up, at any given time, there are 13,000 pigs at Narogen, with more than 1,000 going to market each week. In addition to supplying pork to the Australian market, the Great Southern Pig Company is now exporting to Southeast Asia, supplying 180 carcasses a month to Singapore. We couldn't get nearer to the water. There's a limitation of 49 cubic metres a day, so I've got to be careful and augment it with the bore that we've got. By any standards, it's a remarkable operation. Liam Flanagan has made Great Southern about as efficient as you can possibly get. The complex buys and trucks in its own grain, stores it in silos and then processes and makes its own feed. ...to a bucket elevator down into the hammer mill. And it recently spent half a million dollars upgrading its own mash and pellet plant. Uh, you're probably talking about four and a half tonnes a sow a year. So we're, we, we need about 15,000 tonne of feed in a year. And uh, there can be savings of up, up to $50 a tonne. So you, if you multiply that out, it's a fairly substantial sum. You can save half a million dollars. So um, the, the mill was too small. And uh, when we put the sows outside, uh, we couldn't feed them mash because if you put mash on the ground, they waste it. You know, they trample it in and they, they dung on it and that sort of thing. So we have to feed them pellets. So the only way you can, can produce pellets is to buy a pellet press. So once we made that decision, we had to buy a boiler to make steam to make the pellets and so on. And it just went from there. It became a sort of an exponential thing. And given that what goes in must come out, the Narogen complex has its own on-site sewage treatment system. Liam Flanagan has ensured this is also as efficient as it can possibly be. The quantity uh, that we produce in a week, we have to do something with this. And also the, we have to operate under the EPA licence, which uh, doesn't allow us to spread it on the property. It's got to be exported from the property. So we have to collect it like this and someone comes in with a bobcat and a truck twice a week and takes it away. Liam is a man who has his eye on every detail. Even a glance at the waste coming out of the piggery tells him about the state of his feed mill. You can see a bit of whole grain going through there. That means the screens in the hammer mill are getting worn. We need to replace the screens. That's a good indication of the efficiency of your mill as well. The Great Southern Pig Company is certainly at the top end of pig production. But it's still possible for the small farmer to get into the business without a massive outlay of capital. And running pigs on straw inside clear spans now accounts for 10% of the national herd. So all up you can put up these shelters um, quickly with non-skilled labour. Um, we built these, uh, we're real mugs and we managed to get them up in a couple of weeks. Um, no specialist equipment is required. Uh, they can go up quickly and you can get a return on them quickly. Uh, the effluent is treated as a solid. You've still got to deal with this and this is one of the outstanding issues, what people are going to do with the muck. Um, it is a, a nutrient-rich resource and it will have soil conditioning benefits, but this is yet to be determined. 
The concept of clear span pig production began in Canada in the early 1980s and came to Australia a decade later. Three years ago, the Pig Research Development Corporation and Agriculture Western Australia decided to do the first independent research on this system. And so far, they've reared 2,000 pigs at the research farm outside Perth. Overall, we're fairly happy with the production system. Uh, the pigs uh, have been extremely healthy. Uh, another caveat, we started off with very high health status pigs, free of internal and external parasites, and we've, as far as we can determine, we've managed to keep them that way. Uh, the incidence of respiratory disease appears to be less in the shelters, and certainly apart from proliferative enteritis, we've had no problems with enteric diseases. Uh, I guess everyone's waiting to see if the system will crash um, with use. Uh, We've um, chosen to keep the costs as low as possible and in these particular shelters haven't put any concrete or stabilised flooring into them, uh, just on the, on the sand. Um, so there's obviously a concern that one day we might get a build up of diseases on the sand. The clear span system has been taken up by dozens of farmers in the grain growing areas of Western Australia and it's now catching on around the country. I see that this particular shelter has a role perhaps in the wheat belt where pigs always were reared. Um, in Western Australia we've tended to sort of in the last 20 years move closer to the Swan Coastal Plain which environmentally is not going to be sustainable. Um, if we go back over the range into the wheat belt proper you're getting into the broad acre areas where odour is going to be less of a concern, where there's an abundance of straw and where perhaps the shelters can fit into a, a mixed um, farming situation. Dawson Bradford runs a mixed farm on the western edge of the wheat belt, a couple of hours drive south of Perth. He started pig farming as a sideline with one sow 30 years ago. Now he has a dozen clear spans turning out $1.5 million worth of pigs a year. The clear spans now provide two thirds of the total farm income and it's certainly no longer a sideline. It's probably a major income even though we have uh, 7,500 acres but its, um, its return on capital is um, by far the best compared to all the other enterprises that we're in. That's wool, wheat, lamb production. Dawson Bradford makes his own feed from barley and oats grown on the farm. He supplements this with bought-in lupins. He's nowhere near the size of Great Southern, but he's still producing 200 pigs a week for market. It's worked very well because in the... Uh, We've got all the resources here that are required for, um, for this sort of production and, uh, and it's working, which is, is, is an added bonus. Dawson Bradford's operation and the work by Agriculture WA is showing the way of the future for pig production in Australia. It's certainly a large move because once you build a conventional piggery, you can't do anything else with it. You can't keep cows in there, you can't keep bees in there. It's only for pigs. But if you build these clear span shelters, you can demolish them and you haven't got huge capital imposts and you can replow the land. So I think from a cost point of view, from a welfare point of view, there's a definite move towards it.